Hey guys, t here. Today I got to look at the York for you. It's a tier 6 German heavy cruiser. It's the first heavy cruiser in the line up through tier 5. They were all light cruisers. And you'll notice the difference immediately in the rate of fire. The Nuremberg is much quicker firing. You can pump out a lot of volleys at very quick pace. But the York, much more comparable in terms of rate of fire to the Narlins and the Myoko. And briefly getting back to the shell characteristics of the HE, which is important to understand. We got very good penetration. So the shots are likely to do damage, but the damage they do in terms of exploding and hitting the ship is low. And the fire chance is low. So yes, each shell is more likely to do damage than the average HE shell, but the damage it does is lower. And why is that important? Because the AP, the AP is obviously the bread and butter of the ship, but unless the target is mostly broadside, it's going to be much less effective. Like if you compare it to the Norlands, the American HE, at least from the cruisers, is it's got very good penetration in terms of the angles that it can hit ships at, so the target can be much more angled and successfully penetrate whereas these germans the penetration angles on the ap not as solid so if you have a broadside target like this baltimore you need to be using the ap because anytime you have a broadside target like this you need to be switching to the ap because that's how you're going to be accruing a lot of damage now baltimore is probably my highest priority target in the game accepting destroyers that are closing in for mischief. All right, obviously you need to deal with those because they can wreck your game pretty quickly. But if you had a hypothetical sea of long range targets to shoot at, the Baltimore would be up there. It's very deadly in terms of fire output. Uh, any of my replays you've seen or if you've played this ship, you know, much at all, you know that it can definitely do a lot of damage. And it's got the radar, which makes it a menace for destroyers. So I'm going to take my chances, try and sink him if possible. Now, the islands on Haven like this, if you're right up next to them, they don't provide a lot of cover. I mean, you could, even this German flight arc, much less flat than, like, say, an American AP flight arc. But it's still lofty enough at long range to swooch over there and then drop down and land damage, so... I think people overestimate the defensive value of some of these low islands. What you want to be using these low islands for is blocking the line of sight like I am. If you can maintain... If you can hold the position without having enemy ships see you, then obviously you can fire unmolested which is a major advantage, but using it as like some sort of cover from incoming fire, I don't find that to be particularly effective in most cases, so keep that in mind. Now another little wonky thing about the York, it does have the highest caliber gun for cruisers that we currently have in the game. It's 210 millimeters. Uh, starting at Pensacola and Alba, you have 203, and that remains the same all the way up through the Baltimore and the, Mo the Mogami. But despite these high, the high caliber, um, it's it's kind of a strange gun. There's a lot of drag on the AP, which if you're a pure feel aimer, it's going to make these shells probably, I would say, a lot harder to hit because they're going to, you know, they come out of the gun fast. They got nice arc still, but there's just some inherent, there's inherent drag on every shell when it's in the air. But the drag on the York's AP rounds is particularly high for whatever reason. So if you're using my aiming methods or something similar where you're using the seconds to target, you can adjust for that pretty easily. Now it's going to be a wider lead, of course, which does add some difficulty. But it's going to be easier to adjust than if you're just a pure feel shooter because what you what just naturally looks like the right amount of lead to you is often going to be under under uh, performing just because of the uh, additional drag so keep that in mind 
But yeah, there's just a lot of oddities about this ship. Armor, though, it's very nice armor for the tier 6 cruisers in the game currently. It's the most heavily armored. Uh, tops off at 180 mil millimeters, whereas I think the next closest one at the tier is the New Orleans at 152. So if you angle this properly, you can bounce a lot of shots. I'm not saying, you know, park yourself stationary in front of an Amagi or a Isle or something like that and try and trade volleys. Even if you're well angled, you're still going to be taking some damage from those type of ships. But on the fly, if you're kiting away, you're going to be bouncing a lot of damage. So keep that in mind. You really, you got to play this technically well. And... The, I, Basically, the, I mean, this ends up being the highest damage game that I had in the ship, and you're probably looking at the score right now with the game closing in on, you know, they only have four ships left, so you're probably thinking, well, this probably isn't that high of a damage game. But, you know, it, it does add up. What you basically want to be doing is withering targets down. Again, the HE has very low chance to start fires, but if you keep at it, you're going to be starting some fires. And you're gonna keep chipping away with these relatively small damage values from the AG shells, but you'll see it's doing some, you know, these volleys, if you land them, it's gonna be doing a couple thousand in damage. So it adds up over time. You just have to, again, utilize the terrain if possible to remain undetected and just keep pumping out damage that way. Or if you are forced to play in the open, you're definitely gonna be wanting to keep on the move and predominantly rely on the kiting technique to stay alive. So I have the steering gears mod set up on this. You're definitely going to want that um, to, you know, you're going to need to be as agile as possible when you're dodging shots. In terms of commander, I still have Sheer, the generic, the Deutsche Dewey, I guess I call him. But I only have them tier 8, that's as many points as I'm willing to put in the generic commander, so... In terms of build, I don't have anything too remarkable on the ship, just because I don't really have the resources to do anything extraordinary at this point. But, I don't know, I'm not that familiar with the German commanders yet, just because I don't have any, but I would recommend the one that has the ingenious perk, which shows how many ships are targeting you. The more I've used that, I have that on both my American and Japanese cruisers, and, uh, you know, once I've used it, I've kind of become addicted to it and really can't rely or can't function as well without it. But I think the other German commander that's available is, it looks like a more of an offensive build, and if that's the commander you have, I mean, that's, that's fine. I think most of his perks I would prefer, except for that one tier which has the Ingenious, which again, I consider nearly uh, indispensable at this point. But anyway, you know, that, that's the life of the York for you. A lot of games, you know, it's one of those ships where you're going to have a lot of games where it seems like you're doing a lot of work, and it seems like you're playing pretty well, and you're putting out a lot of volleys that are landing, and, you know, everything's going well for you and then you're going to look at the score and see 60,000, 70,000 and that's the kind of ship it is, at least in my experience. If you have, uh, if you consistently score a lot of high damage games, let me know how you're doing it, but you know, it's not that it doesn't do damage, it's just that it takes a long time and with the new scoring system which is short in the games. I feel like high damage games, high XP scoring games are a lot harder to come by now just because there's a lot of games that are ending prematurely. Now what's this Nagato doing? Is he killing himself just because it's towards the end of the game? No, he's actually trying to reset the cab. Him and both the IO are trying to get in a position. They're making a last ditch effort. But again, post update, especially capture the base mode, out of the two modes, I think Capture the Base is more negatively impacted by the scoring changes. I'm having a lot of games where we're up on ships big time and some lone ship sneaks in and is able to cap and there's really nothing you can do. 
you have a short amount of time to A, recognize the situation, and B, turn around and then get back to base. It's, it's very hard to do, so... I uh, made my feelings known on the game changes publicly in a place where Wargaming will see them. I don't think they've put any extra stock, in my opinion, over anyone else's. But I, I know there's a lot of players that agree with me, and so hopefully they're going to examine the game data, which I know they will. I mean, anytime they update the game, they're taking a look at the data. I just hope they... I'd rather just they completely revert to the old scoring system and the old timers on the games and try it again. You know, they're trying to get teams to be playing the objectives more, which is an admirable goal. I agree with them there. But I think they kind of swung a missed in this instance. So, see, we're burning down the Iowa. We got a flood on them. And we're just going to put one more in them. And, oh, he gone. So that's a look at the York for you. I hope that helped you understand how to play a little bit. Again, it's not the easiest ship. I think a lot of the tier 6 ships are kind of on the harder side in terms of playability. But if you did like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Questions, comments for me, leave them below. And I'll see y'all later. Alright, peace.